Yes, and as people get their food, they can come in and sit down and join our program. First of all, thank you for coming to the Garden Capital of Texas. We uh, are showing off our beauty right now with all the flowers and the greenery, and I hope you enjoy your stay here. And secondly, I am going to thank the people who helped us put on this really nice legislative summit. First, with our diamond sponsors, I'm sorry, our presenting sponsor is Texas Healthcare Association. Our panel discussion sponsor is Chenier Energy. Our diamond sponsor is Alabama Cachada Tribe of Texas, BNSF Railroad, Kelly Hart and Hallman LLP, who is sponsoring Attorney General Kim Paxton, Nacogdoches Medical, Nacogdoches Medical Center Health Network, Southern Power Company, Nacogdoches Generating Facility, Tipton Ford Lincoln. Our platinum sponsors are AGC of Texas, Angelina and Nature's River Authority, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Texas, Citizens First Bank, Direct Energy, East Texas Electric Cooperative Inc., Ener Entergy, Nacogdoches Memorial Health, Encore Electric Delivery, Sabine River Authority of Texas, Stephen F. Austin State University, Superior Health Plan, Texas Bankers Association, Texas Medical Association. Our GOAT sponsors are CenturyLink, Chevron, eTech, Grasshopper Anesthesia Services, City of Nacogdoches, Nacogdoches Economic Development Corporation, Nipco Inc., Sam Houston Electric Cooperative, SurfPro of Lufkin in South Nacogdoches County, Stephen F. Austin State University Student Government Affairs or Association, Southside Bank, Texas Forest Country Partnership, Texas Nursery and Landscape Association, Texas Oil and Gas Association Insurance Agency, the Texas A&M University System, TXU Energy. Our silver sponsors are Austin Bank, Texas, Nacogdoches, Urban Yarbor, Bancorp BMX Insurance, Castile and Roberts, Charles Poole Real Estate, Inc., Ed Poole, Commercial Bank of Texas, Curtis and Clark Energy Services, Farmers Insurance Grace Handler Agency, Layman Eye Center, Manpower Group, Office Pride of East Texas, R&K Distributors, Inc., Regents Bank, Roger Van Horn, Ruckel Insurance and Financial Group, State Farm Ted Smith, and TFP Nutrition. We would also like to thank our Government, government Affairs Committee, who has put in many long hours, and State Representatives Travis Clardy and our State Senator Robert Nichols. We would also like to thank Stephen F. Austin State University and Dr. Baker Patillo for hosting this event today. It's much appreciated. I would like to remind everybody that if you parked in the parking garages, that if you will speak with somebody at the registration desk, they will have a uh, permit for you to get out of the parking garage. At this time, I am going to hand the mic over to Scott Waller, our chairman of the board for the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, Donna. I think it's pretty evident this morning who had a really, really, really good time last night. And I, I think uh, s some folks here probably had a good night's sleep, and then the rest of them probably had to sleep fast last night. Um, I'm Scott Waller. I'm the chairman of the board of the chamber, and uh, I'd just like to take a, a, a brief moment to thank Donna, Donna Finley, who is our government affairs committee chairman. They worked tirelessly uh, to uh, organize this summit, and. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, Jerry Jones, the district director for uh, Representative Clardy, uh, Don Glover on staff for Senator Nichols, and our chamber staff, Barbara Hall, uh, Kelly Daniel. Uh, they've just done a tremendous job, and we want to thank them. One of the newest committees at our Chamber of Commerce is the Advocacy Committee, and we have uh, met and we have uh, discussed the issues that we feel like are paramount for Nacogdoches County and Deep East Texas. Um, first on our list is transportation. Uh, the Nacogdoches County Chamber of Commerce urges area stakeholder groups working with the city of Nacogdoches and Texas officials to develop a strategy 
to obtain regional commercial air service to Nacogdoches and Angelina County. I'd just like to see a show of hands. How many of you drove here from Austin? If you drove from Austin, raise your hand. Do you know why we call it Deep East Texas? Yeah. Of those of you who just rose your hand, how many of you actually tried to, to get online and book an airline ticket to get here? Okay. We feel like commercial air service is paramount to, uh, to uh, our area. We urge the Texas legislature to address metro traffic congestion in Texas without impacting funding levels or sources for rural communities in Texas. Thirdly, we support efforts to fund the construction of I-69 to ensure the completion of this project on a timely schedule. And I know that there's a, there's a, a, a term that's used called connectivity. Um, <clears throat> when you look at a map and you're, you live in Austin and you want to drive to Nacogdoches, you will see, soon find out you can't get there from here. We urge, uh, another of our issues is health care. We urge legislative or regulatory action that will result in faster reimbursement of health care providers. Medical providers in Nacogdoches, Texas have indicated to us that the pace of reimbursement of federal funds has forced them to consider dropping patients. We support efforts to expand support for mental health resources and services for children and adults in Nacogdoches County. And our third and final area of concern is education. Uh, first of all, we believe that investing in and supporting local school districts will be a major contributor to the economic future of Nacogdoches County and Texas. We urge legislators to support adequate funding for our education system and investment in the state's technical college system. And secondly, we believe that investing in workforce development and technical training will pay big dividends to rural areas of Texas. So those are our uh, legislative priorities, and uh, thank you for uh, considering that. At this time, I'd like to uh, give our invocation, so if you would, bow your heads with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together, and we thank you for those who are gathered here today. We pray for safety for travel. We ask that you would bless this time that we have together and to bless this food for the nourishment of our bodies, and we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. At this time, it's my privilege to introduce uh, our host uh, for today, Dr. Baker Patillo, the president of Stephen F. Austin State University. Dr. Patillo was raised in Arp, Texas, which is about an hour up the road. He and his wife, Janice, both grew up there in Arp. After graduation from high school, he came to SFA, graduated with a bachelor's and a master's degree, and immediately went to work in the placement and student financial aid department. He rose up through the ranks as director of that department, dean of student services, vice president of student affairs, vice president of university affairs, and became university president in 2006. Dr. Patillo is a former chairman of the Southland Conference Board of Directors. He's a member of the NCAA Division I Board of Directors and a member of the NCAA Board of Governors. Nobody bleeds a brighter shade of purple than Dr. Baker Patillo. He's been an ardent supporter and a visionary leader for Stephen F. Austin State University, for the Nacogdoches community and for our county at large, as well as the entire Deep East Texas region. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Baker Patillo. Good morning. Last night, I thoroughly enjoyed the reception, uh, the opportunity to visit with many of you that I know personally and to make new friends. I thought it was a very uh, worthwhile event and I hope all of you enjoyed the event last night. This morning, it is my privilege though to welcome you to Stephen F. Austin State University. Those of you who are representatives and senators here today know that we are known as a regional comprehensive university. However, I want you to know that our university consists of nine voting regents, approximately 800 faculty members, approximately 1,200 staff members, approximately 13,000 students, and over 100,000 100, living alums. So this morning, I wish to welcome you to SFA on behalf of the entire university family. 
Now, I would also like to tell you that we appreciate you being here today, especially you reps and senators, because you see us in Austin quite often. We visit with you in your offices. We catch you in the hallways when we can. We appear before you, testify before you, and we're always seeking assistance. And you are always very accommodating to us and provide whatever assistance you can. But we're grateful that you are on the campus of Stephen F. Austin State University today. And for those of you who have not been here before, visited here, we hope you will have a better feel. You'll have the spirit of SFA and know more of what it's like here on campus in Nacogdoches. So we thank you very much for that. I would also want you to know that we're extremely proud of our senator and of our representative. We think we have the very best. Senator Nichols and I have worked together since 2006. He was elected to the Senate that year. I was elected as president of the university. Throughout that time, he has provided counsel to me on many, many topics. He has carried legislation for us. He's carried TRB bills for us. And at times when they didn't pass, he would say, Baker, we'll carry it again next session, and next session will be our time. He's also hired our alums to work in his office. Um, he has pictures of SFA in his office. He's just very, very supportive of SFA, and we're proud to have him as our senator. Once again, we're equally proud to have Travis Clardy as our representative. We think we have the very best state representative. It's been my privilege to work with Travis Clardy since probably 20, 25 years. He had sons in the charter school here at SFA, and he did pro bono work for us in helping us get our charter schools established and et cetera. Once again, he has worked with us, assisted us in every way, carried TRB bills for us, and we appreciate him very much for what he has done. Now, those of you in general who are senators and representatives, I would be remiss this morning if I did not thank you for the tuition revenue bond that you just approved for Stephen F. Austin during the last session. You approved a TRB for us for $46.4 million to build a new science, technology, engineering, and math building. And if you walked outside this building and looked down the street approximately 100 yards, you would see that new building that is under construction. We intend to have a ribbon cutting and open house on July the 24th. You will be invited to that. I'm inviting you today to attend that. Your office will be notified of that event and we will send you a formal invitation. And we hope that each one of you can attend and be proud of what you have done for the students of SFA, for the students of East Texas in general, and for the citizens of Texas. Once again, we're extremely proud that you're here today. We hope that your day will be very enjoyable, educational, and beneficial. There are many of us here today from Stephen F. Austin, and if we may provide assistance to you in any way, please do not hesitate. And many of you know at SFA, our colors are purple and white, and we believe in Axum Jack, so I'll simply conclude by saying, Axum Jacks. One of our hosts for today uh, is our state senator, Robert Nichols. Senator Nichols been a very successful businessman. He's been a uh, transportation commissioner and uh, we think he does a superb job as our uh, state senator. So I'd like to uh, welcome Senator Robert Nichols. That was a very nice short introduction. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's good to be here. I appreciate very much all of you being here, the sponsors, for your financial help. And uh, 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 we've got a lot of members from the House and the Senate, which is great. They came over from all the whole state. Uh, I, I, even the members from two years ago enjoyed watching the panels because when we're in session, we don't really get to just sit and talk about what we feel about issues. And it's great to be able to sit and listen to the different members. Uh, different parties, different parts of the state talk about the different, the way they feel about things and their philosophical approach to legislation. And uh, we very much appreciate all of y'all being here. This is early, I know, but uh, uh, it's going to be a great day. So welcome to Nacogdoches. Thank you for being here and we appreciate everybody for what you do. Thank you.
Our other host is uh, State Representative Travis Clardy, and by golly, here he is. Would everybody say a big howdy-do to uh, Representative Travis Clardy? Thank you, Mr. President, and good morning. Uh, I saw a few of you last, I don't know what that was, but it, I don't think it was important. Uh, yeah, y'all look pretty good this morning, considering last night. Uh, great to be here. Welcome to Nacogdoches. Welcome to Stephen Foster State University. Dr. Patillo, thank you for having us on your campus again. You're always very hospitable and welcoming to have us here. But what a great opportunity to be here to talk about the, the issues we have. Hopefully there's programs on your uh, tables. You know what we're doing and what's going to happen today. We have an amazing array of speakers, uh, an amazing uh, group of moderators to talk about what we're going to uh, the issues that are important to Texas, but uh, I just want to welcome all of you uh, to Nacogdoches, to uh, our hometown, to the oldest town of Texas, to the garden capital of Texas. I wish we had enough time to load you up, drive you around to all the sites and the, the things we have in this town, but uh, last night we stayed here, most of us stayed at the hotel, um, but uh, if you have an opportunity, don't feel like you need to rush off. Uh, this is a Chamber of Commerce event. Uh, we would love for you to stay. Uh, open your wallets, open your billfolds, get your checkbooks. If you just want to sign the bottom of the checks, I'll fill out the rest. Don't feel like you need to, to, to do, put a lot of effort into this. But uh, let's have a great breakfast this morning. Uh, I don't know, I don't have the program. Scott, are you going to take over for me right after this? Yes. Yeah, don't run off from me. Don't leave me up here. Come back up. Uh, but I want to, again, thank uh, the, the members, uh, House members that are here this morning. Uh, thank you again for coming in. It's really pretty interesting. Last night I was looking around the room, uh, the, the, the folks that came literally from all over Texas. I just saw John Frulo from uh, Lubbock here this morning. Uh, John's one of the guys you can always count on not to miss a free meal. Uh, thank you, John, for being here for that. And but we, but really, it's just an amazing crowd, amazing opportunity. Uh, you know, the, one of the things I do as a state representative for Nacogdoches and encourage people to do this and come and be part of this program uh, is I, I think we can dispel some of the notions, Scott, about what East Texas is really all about. Uh, a lot of folks are shocked when they come here to find out that people actually have more than one pair of socks, uh, <laughs> that we actually know how to use a knife and a fork. Uh, it is, it's, it is a, a fascinating thing to see as we go across the state and we meet with each other, uh, the, 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 the things that we, uh, the, the differences that, that there exist around the state of Texas uh, but also the things we have in common. And the things we have in common, and I'm looking forward to uh, Jeff Mosley's comments today as he is our breakfast speaker. Uh, and, and the thing that we share, all of us, in this room, that's why we get up in the morning and come to these events. And then we'll come back for breakfast here, Governor, er, for lunch and hear Governor Abbott, and then hear uh, General Paxton later in the afternoon, and all of our speakers. The thing that we share, and it's important, it's the reason that we're all here, is our common love of Texas. And here we are in the oldest town in Texas, where Texas began. You cannot tell the story of Texas without telling the story of Nacogdoches. And so let's uh, begin this morning with a great breakfast. Eat hearty, my friends, because it's going to be a long, full day. You're going to need to have your energy, especially you, Mance. And uh, but boy, what a, what, this is a great crowd. What an event. So uh, I'm going to stop rambling. Scott, you come up here and keep us going. Keep us on schedule. I'm the one who's supposed to keep us on schedule, so I better do my part. But thank you well, again. Welcome to Nacogdoches. It's great to be here. All right. I'd like to welcome to the podium now the President and CEO of our Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Wayne Mitchell. Well, good morning, everyone. First of all, I apologize for my delay in getting up here to the podium this morning. I tried out for the football team here at the university and sadly uh, pulled a hamstring. So, uh, but uh, it'll be a better year with the other guy, I guess. Uh, but it, 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 all kidding aside, it is, I'm thrilled to uh, have the opportunity to say hello to you folks uh, and uh, add my welcome to, uh, to uh, uh, your arrival here in uh, beautiful Nacogdoches, Texas. Uh, I uh, have the privilege of being here for a very short period of time, about 18 months, and absolutely fall in love with Texas and East Texas and, and, and Nacogdoches. And uh, 
But my role here this morning is to introduce you to a, few, uh, a gentleman I had the privilege of meeting in League City last June. Um, it is my honor to introduce Jeff Mosley, the CEO of the Texas Association of Business. Judge Mosley has had four decades of public and private sector experience. He currently serves as the CEO of the Texas Association of Business, the largest business association in Texas, representing over 2,800 Texas businesses that employ a combined 2.5 million individuals here in Texas. Judge Mosley has served in many prominent positions in Texas, including Vice President of Government Affairs for the Texas Central Partners, a uh, member of the Texas Transportation Commission, CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, CEO of the Office of Economic Development and Tourism for the State of Texas, and he's a former Denton County Judge and Justice of the Peace. Judge Mosley is a sixth generation Texan and a graduate and an outstanding alumnus of Southern Nazarene University in Oklahoma. He's married to Jackie Barrett of Comanche, Texas, and they have two daughters, Joy and Jenny. Ladies and gentlemen, would you welcome the Honorable Judge Jeff Mosley. Thank you, Wayne. What a delight to be here on this beautiful day, on this beautiful campus. I think uh, any uh, city in the world, Dr. Patillo, would be thrilled to have Stephen F. Austin lifted up and put in their city. This is a global world-class campus you've built here, and especially this building we're in. I can only imagine what the science building will look like, but thank you for hosting. And what a delight to be, again, with uh, C. Wayne Rice and with the Nacogdoches County Chamber. We're so proud to have them as members of the Texas Association of Business. And then uh, to work alongside with uh, Senator Nichols and Representative Clardy on this event, I commend uh, these gentlemen and the Chamber for bringing us all together to talk about the future. And to start here in this historic city, imagine what the founding fathers of Nacogdoches would be thinking to know we're here today and we're looking over the horizon and we're looking at the Texas of 2036, which would be our bicentennial, right? That's our 200 year birthday and it's right around the corner. And here we are in the origins, historic origins of the state with distinguished members of the legislature and business leaders coming together and kind of a mastermind to talk about these big issues and big challenges. And so I thank you for including me and letting me come and bring a quick open to this wonderful conference. And again, I, I thank everyone for coming together because we do live in a wonderful state and we've got a fascinating future and there's probably not another state in the history of America that's growing the way we're growing. Uh, California may have said that during the Dust Bowl days when a lot of Oklahomans were desperate and migrating to the West Coast, but the demographers don't stutter, do they? We're 27 million in population, we're growing to 50 million, and friends, we just won't recognize our state in about 25 or 30 years. And that sounds like a big statement, but this month is my 37 year wedding anniversary, and I'll just tell you, 37 years goes by just like that just like that. So thank you for coming together to talk about the future of our wonderful state because we do want to make sure we fight to preserve, protect those values that make Texas special, but also to make sure that we're fighting for the innovation that attracts the high paying jobs because high paying jobs build a strong tax base and tax bases are what pay for public education and health care and all these issues that we have to attract when we have a thousand new Texans a day. And a thousand new Texans today deserve basic fundamental services and a healthy tax base pays for those services. So that's, that's why we're thrilled at the Texas Association of Business to have 200 chambers of commerce as, as members as well as our business members. And, and by the way, over half of our members are small businesses. So we represent companies with 10 employees or less. And we're real proud of that representation as well. So I'll go very quickly through a few slides this morning uh, but just honored to be a part of, of this opening uh, session, especially looking over the horizon at 2036 at our bicentennial. So in that spirit, let me see, there's a device here to turn the slides. Andrew said he thinks Representative Clardy knocked it off the <laughs> dais here. <laughs> All right, let's see if it works. Uh, 
All right, Andrew. Thank you very much. Let's see. Whoops. All right, so basically these are simply our, our main focuses, as you can tell. We really are, we're a member organization, and our members pay us so we can be a spokesperson, an advocate on behalf of our member priorities, uh, member issues. Uh, we're very pleased that we're in, get involved politically. We have uh, political action committees, and so we're thrilled to uh, step up and talk to candidates. Uh, we have a, a scorecard. And we use that during a legislative session to talk about how our priorities are being represented in each session. And then we, we really fight for jobs and paychecks. And we know that that happens because chambers of commerce and our members are fighting to make sure the business climate is competitive. And it's real interesting because we're starting to see some ideas come into our state that don't look very Texan. They look more like California. Uh, there was a fellow, I have a picture uh, the other day, somebody sent me a picture in Austin and he's standing up with a big cardboard sign, and it said, uh, we ought to ask all the Californians to go back to California and make America great again, MAGA. He had MAGA underneath it, make the California. Well, that's, of course, simplistic, but it means that there are ideas that are coming into our state that we want to just make sure we look at them, we review them, and we make sure that they're good for, for our business community, and, and it keeps, keeps our business climate competitive. So we, we are voice for our uh, policy issues, clearly. And then we, uh, you know, we have members. We're, we work very, we're very pleased with our strong relationship with members of the legislature. And uh, we are pleased to be a state chamber of commerce. We wear that badge very proudly. We're an affiliate of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. And interestingly enough, we're also an affiliate of the National Association of Manufacturers. So we're pleased to have those two uh, national affiliations. Going the wrong way, sorry about that. So uh, one of the things that we're very, very uh, proud of is uh, launching uh, this initiative called Text Biz Votes. And we know that it's real important to talk to our members about how to talk to their employees. And it, it's real interesting, an employer feels very comfortable talking to their employee about, uh, so let's say, a good, healthy lifestyle. Why is that? because a healthy employee is good for, the, it's good for the company, it's good for the bottom line. Well, we've opened up an initiative where we talk to our members about how to talk to their employees about what a pro-business candidate looks like. We call it E to E, employer to employee. And we're actually going out and just saying, we're not going to tell anybody who to vote for, but we're just going to say these are the fundamentals of what a pro-business candidate looks like. And then the employee can pretty well make a decision uh, based on the description of what a pro-business candidate looks like. Uh, it's fascinating because some of the corporations have never had this discussion before. What we're finding, the chambers are finding that opportunity to have a, a very basic discussion saying, you know what, here are candidates that fit the pro-business climate of our community. Uh, I was in IBM the other day, and the CEO of IBM um, has started this dialogue and the executive said, you know, she, she began this dialogue several years ago, and there was a lot of pushback. Employees were kind of offended that somehow a corporation would open this discussion just generally saying, here's our core values, and these are the candidates that line up with pro-business values. Bill Bennett wrote a book, uh, Book of Virtues. You remember that? And he taught all of us that there are core values that we can teach in public schools. We can teach honesty. We can teach that you have to be responsible. You have to show up for work. These are just basic fundamental values. That's the spirit of our EDE program, where we just say these are the fundamentals of what a pro-business climate looks like. When you go back and you register to vote and you show up and go vote, uh, you're helping yourself, you're helping our community, and you're helping our company uh, stay competitive. So we're very pleased with this uh, text biz jo uh, votes. And there's a, a site there, hashtag TextBizVotes, and it basically has the template language. So we just tell our members, to, you know, go to this website, 
you don't know how to talk to your employees, we'll show you, we'll give you these templates. And it's real simple, it's nonpartisan language, but it just breaks it down and says these are the fundamentals and this is what makes, you know, our business uh, grow. We know that advocacy really is uh, very critical to growing the bottom line, so we make no bones about it. We look at jobs and paychecks, that's our North Star. Somebody talks about, you know, social agenda, we say, well, jobs and paychecks, that's our social agenda. And so we ultimately come in and we just lay that down. Is this going to help us grow jobs to keep our tax uh, base he uh, healthy? And we have uh, worked with uh, coalitions to, you know, advocate on behalf of various issues. So more and more, you know, chambers have to reinvent themselves depending on what the economy looks like. And so when the economy is robust and healthy, then the chamber has a different role. And when the economy is being challenged, then there's different opportunities. Uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, we would say in state government when I was at Department of Economic Development under Governor Bush and Perry, one of the, one of the slogans around our department was BFO. I said, what does that mean? Well, that's a blinding flash of the obvious. And we felt like we had a bl blinding flash of the obvious uh, last legislative session because there were some very anti-business things coming up in policy and we, we just thought, this is really strange. We're, we got kind of spoiled because we always enjoyed having a very pro-business legislature until last session. And all of a sudden, these very anti-business winds started blowing, and that was another motivation for us to look at how we could stand up and be a voice for our members. So we used these coalitions. One of them was Keep Texas Open for Business. It was basically just saying, you know, there's things that we feel like are very important and critical for us to fight for, and there are things that are necessary, and then there are things that are unnecessary. Uh, we also came up with a coalition for fighting for a million Texas jobs. Uh, that was related to NAFTA. And do you know that because of free trade with Mexico and Canada, one million Texans are working directly, and then there's all the indirect jobs related to NAFTA. That's a, that's a pretty big priority, we think, so that we created a Texas-Mexico uh, trade coalition. We're in the process of setting up a trade coalition for Canada, but we want to fight for these jobs and, and make sure that we just sit on that buck and bronc. You know, these NAFTA trade negotiations are going to go up and they're going to go down. We're going to have good days, we're going to have bad days. I haven't checked my tweet this morning. It might be a good day, it might be a bad day. <laughs> That's just the nature of the NAFTA negotiation, but we know one thing, we want to have a coalition to make sure that we're fighting, you know, to help the business voice be a part of that discussion, of protecting a million jobs. So we talked about text biz votes. Sorry about this. Um, uh, this, this really, you know, Texas is so grand, we're so vast, and we have so many rights to be proud of being a Texan because we're so big, we do things big. But here's an interesting statistic, and it, it, it's kind of a fascinating one, because when it comes to voting, we just haven't been so big and bold, and that's where there's a great opportunity. But in electoral participation for 2010, uh, Texas ranked 51st in voter turnout. 51st out of 50 states, Dr. Patillo. I don't know how we do that, <laughs> but uh, I'm sure there's a statistician somewhere that can explain that. But I guess the point to be made is we've got a great opportunity, don't we? to step up and make sure that we're having a dialogue about the value of registering and going and voting. And by the way, if you didn't vote in the primary and there's a runoff in your neighborhood, you can vote, can't you? You can go and vote in that runoff. So we're having that discussion too about the value of, you might have missed the primary, but there's a great opportunity in a lot of the regions of the state to go participate in a runoff. And Texas residents ranked 42nd for voter registration. Wow. Another great opportunity, isn't there, for our chambers and for us to work alongside our members to make sure that we have this dialogue about the value of just getting registered and showing up. Uh, so we're, we're very pleased. Uh, low voter turnout. If, if all of our members have this discussion and our voters show up, guess what? We win. Because what we're finding is a lot of anti-business members are getting elected in very low turnout by very narrow margins. And so when we talk to our employers to talk to their employees, there's no way that we won't have pro-business platforms and pro-business legislation. And we need to do that. We need to protect our members. And we take that responsibility very seriously, that if we're not showing up and voting, 
we're leaving our poor member out there hanging. And I say that as a former county judge where people knew where I parked my car at night. I knew what it was like to have a, a real strong grassroots support for an issue, and I knew what it was like not to have strong grassroots support. And somebody would run in and they'd say, Judge, I've got two votes on the commissioner's court, and you'll be the third. And I'd say, you go get the other two votes. We don't need to have a split vote on this, and we need to bring everybody along on this issue. Don't leave the old county judge out there hanging. So we need to take care of our members of our House and the Senate, and that's why we're telling our, our, our businesses, get out there and get your employees to get out and show these members that they've got cover when they stand up for pro-business issues. We were very pleased at the end of September, I'll just wrap up with this comment. Our board uh, did something that I think is very wonderful, and that was unanimously approving the creation of a litigation center. And in the past, we've, we've been around, kind of nibbling around this, but we boldly set forward this idea that we can pursue business-friendly policy in courts of law. And so a litigation center really allows us to receive uh, some type of a concern by a member. There's a vetting process, and then our litigation center can decide whether there's value of putting our brand as the plaintiff in that suit. So imagine how this tool can be used. It also allows us over time to go ahead and look at a scorecard for judicial officers and then to perhaps uh, raise money and play and put a pack together for judicial races. So that's where the litigation center is heading. We've already had a first win. The Department of Labor had a, a very onerous fiduciary rule. You might remember the Trump administration weighed in on this. Well, we joined already as a co-plaintiff on that and have had a win. And uh, the other day, the city of Austin passed an ordinance. And typically, we support local control. We like local control. When you have a state as vast as Texas, you should have the ability for local communities to determine their fate. Well, city of Austin overstepped that. They did it with Uber, and many of you in this room and the legislature are there to say, you know what, we need to fight to make sure there's a competitive state. So that city ordinance was rolled back. Well, they came back a few weeks ago, and the city of Austin passed an ordinance on sick leave, and boy, that sounds like a great idea. I need to take care of employees. But if you read the fine print, and you have workers working in Austin for a period, I think, of about eight days or something, that employee also has the same benefit, even though you're based in Nacogdoches and your employee is working in Austin. Would you call that an overreach? We think so. So look for our litigation center. I think we're probably going to file an injunction against the city of Austin. And then we'll be coming back and working with a lot of the members in this room on a legislative remedy. Uh, so from time to time, you'll see us take a position where we feel like locally the ordinances are going away from a pro-business state. We took a position against city of Denton on fracking, for example. And so we'll just, it's interesting how if uh, certain groups can't effectuate policy changes in the legislature, they're starting to run their policies through city councils. So uh, where there's another big concern, city of San Antonio has a labor peace agreement. If you're a small business or a vendor, uh, you cannot operate out at the San Antonio airport unless you're a member of a labor uh, or a union. Well, that hasn't yet been passed, but it's being discussed. We're very concerned about that. Uh, so we're seeing that the unions and labor movements are starting to work a lot of their policy through uh, city ordinances. So that's why we're pleased to have the, the litigation center. We've also opened up a jobs and data center because we want to help our chamber members as economic development comes along. We want to have uh, the ability to have an economist on our team to do our own white papers, our own policy, to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with some other organizations that are holding forward on putting forward their philosophies on what's pro-business. So we want to have, through our data center, the ability to stand up and offer testimony and white papers on what a pro-business policy looks like. Hurricane Harvey, uh, second largest, I think, disaster in America to come to Texas. Uh, we are very committed to working with our small business members this will take a long time. Uh, we thank everybody in this room that's already pitched in and helped, but we're committed as well. And we set up a recovery center. We, if anybody has an interest in that after this, we can talk a little bit about that. And lastly, I would just say, I know, I, I know C. Wayne uh, Mitchell and the organization here uh, is so committed to transportation. And uh, of course, 
of course, Texas has to be committed to that long term. And when uh, Senator Nichols was on the commission, he, he did some wonderful things, setting the template there and, and uh, laying the groundwork for I-69, a strategic corridor, getting goods to market. Uh, TAB is clearly on record uh, saying that, again, there should be a range of tools for local communities to enjoy. Uh, you can see on this slide here, you know, we believe in P3s for mobility purposes. Uh, we support uh, comprehensive development agreements. We support toll roads. We support managed lanes. We support enhanced fees. We're, we're just right there because we know, again, uh, if, you, if you really push the state to cash and carry and self-fund, uh, then projects grow from being 15-year projects to being 40-year projects because there's only so much money we can loan ourselves. And we just think, again, a state growing from 27 to 50 million deserves to have a range of tools. So that's generally where we are. Uh, we're even uh, on record supporting a, a gasoline tax increase. So that we just believe it's time to really take a hard look at this wonderful infrastructure we've enjoyed it, haven't we? Texas has beautiful highways, but just the cost of maintenancing the roads and it's, it's, I think uh, the question I asked when I was on the commission, uh, Senator Nichols, what is the value of the highways that we have, this asset? If, you, if you're managing an asset, you want to ask, what is the replacement cost of that asset, don't you? So you know how to maintenance it. And I think the number came back at about a trillion dollars, maybe a little bit more than that. So the highway system we enjoy didn't just happen as a cosmic accident. You know, it took a lot of wonderful, hard decisions from leaders and we stand on their shoulders and we have this trillion dollar asset we must manage and continue to make sure that it's serving the one and a half trillion dollar economy of the state of Texas. So with that, I'll just say thank you so much for a chance to come and bring greetings. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about our organization, we have this website. If you're not a member of TAB, we'd love to talk to you about that. But God bless you. God bless Texas. Thank you so much for this chance to come and bring greetings. Thank you, Judge Mosley. What a great way to start today. Well, uh, 7.52. My job today is maybe not the most punctual person in the room, is to keep us on schedule. And part of that is, and this is the thing I love about serving the Texas House. I got a text this morning from Gina Hinojosa, who's joined us this morning, and it says, get your butt here. They're saying nice things about you. <laughs> and thank you. And a great picture of her and Phil King sitting there. And so, you know, that's the sort of camar camaraderie we share. Uh, but, but, uh, but Judge Mosley, again, thank you for the, those words. Uh, I, I really like the fact that we're here. Uh, we're going to spend a lot more time today talking about classrooms than we're talking about bathrooms. Uh, I think that's important. We're in a university here. We're going to talk about education. We're going to talk about the issues that matter to Texans, about health care, about all these things. So look at your program, but what I'll ask you to do is keep an eye on your watch. When we finish, let's move quickly and, and, and sharply in and out of the rooms. Get to where you need to be. If you have questions, we're going to have staff members standing around to direct you, let you know, know where you need to go. Um, speaking of bathrooms, we do have indoor plumbing in Nacogdoches, and uh, that will be available as well. Um, you know, somebody asked me about the bathroom bill last session, and I said, we solved this problem in East Texas a long, long time ago. We're very forward-thinking here, I believe. And, uh, you know, people, what do you do about this whole transgender bathroom thing? So, well, we solved it. Uh, you know, we've had transgender bathrooms in te East Texas for 40, 50, 60 years. We just call them porta potties. And it's, and it's worked pretty well. Uh, I am thinking about filing a bathroom bill this next session. Uh, it, what I think our bathroom policy in the state of Texas should be, that you should go to the bathroom, and I'm encouraging you to follow this today. Go to the bathroom, take care of your business, don't leave a mess, wash your hands, and keep your hands to yourself. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let's all stand up, let's make our way out the doors, down the hall, to the classrooms, or to the big auditorium. This is gonna be a great day. Thank you again. Welcome to Nacogdoches. <laughs>